So many times you're asked, attention, 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 Achtung, here, okay. Um, many times you've been asked to pass a structure. Let me just put it over here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it over here uh, uh, A. Uh, the reason is that when I'm calling it, I want. Yeah, there you go. Okay. So many times you've been asked to pass a structure or a class. When I say structure. You mean class, potatoes, potatoes, you know that, right? So when I pass a structure, uh, you're asked to pass a structure as an argument to a class for a purpose. Whatever the reason, I don't care. You pass stuff to a function for some reason. What is the reason over here? I have a name, it has two things in it, right? And I want to print them, right? So what I do over here is pretty simple. I pass it to the print name function, then after it's there, I'm just going to say print the name, first name, print the last name, and life is beautiful, right? Now, let's put our analysis hat on and take a look at it one more time. When you are passing that thing, what's going to happen at line, a, at line 7? At line 7, you have an instantiation happening. So first, a local variable called A is going to get cre created in function print name. That's step number 1. So I'm talking about line 12 happening. So I, I, I created a, 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 an instance of type of uh, structure name, and I set it to Fred Soleil. Then I'm saying print name n. So as soon as line 12 is invoked, it jumps to 7 to call it. But going to 7, it's going to first create a structure called a, correct? And immediately initialize that to the value of n. So essentially, line 7, when line 12 is activated, line 7 will be print name, print name, name A equals to N. That's what's going to happen essentially, right? So let's see what happens. First, name A is created, correct? Which means it's going to occupy 52 bytes of memory. Then it has to copy all the 52 bytes of the variable n into variable a, correct? Then comes in there, prints a first, prints a last. You already know we did constructors and destructors. The destructor has to get called and de deallocate name from the memory, Dest give the memory back to the OS. Then it goes out back to main and continues, right? Very expensive. In IPC 144, and don't tell me they didn't tell you this, the IPC 144, they always told you it's better to pass what of a structure to a function? An address. Why? Because if you pass an address, only four bytes is going, and it's pointing to the original thing. But not to shoot yourself in a foot, what did you do with that address? You made it a constant address, right? Now, we have references in C++. The heck with the pointer thingy. I can create a new name. So what I can do, instead of saying name A, I can say name reference A. And the outcome is identical. It doesn't make any difference. If I run it, it will still print it, and life would be beautiful. But there is one difference over here. It, it still prints it. The difference is that no extra variable is created. So when line 12 is invoked, it goes to line 7 and says, give n a new name called a. a becomes a new name for n, so essentially, remotely, it's printing n. No memory allocated, no copying is happening. It's going to be extremely fast. There is one problem that is shooting yourself in a foot. If by mistake in here, you actually do something like and you do stuff like this all the time. Everyone does it. By mistake, you do this. What happens? After it actually prints the name, it sets the last name to nothing. Why? Because it's not a constant thing. That's where your logic kicks in. Your brains kick in. Step back and take a look at your function and ask yourself, does this function need to change the argument that is coming in? Does it? Not that, that, not that it needs. Does the logic requires that? 
if I ask you what time is it, would it change the time of your watch? No. You tell me what time it is, I know what time it is, and you're done. It's the same thing. When I print the name, it should remain Fred Soleil afterwards. Printing something should it change its content. Whenever that thing comes to your mind, as soon as you see my function is a read-only function, immediately you make it a constant. And now you're in a good. Now it's going to actually give you an error if you try to tr uh, change something. So again, what that constant does, it enforces the business logic, which means it keeps you from being hurt from your worst enemy. Who's that worst enemy? You. All right? And it makes sure that you won't make a mistake. And it's extremely important to do so. Now, in that cargo train thingy, it's telling you to pass a cargo to something by value, right? It does ask you to do that. It passes. It wouldn't hurt you if you make that a constant reference cargo. Still, the program's going to run. Everything's the same. Signature is the same. The function call remains the same. The function call doesn't know that's a reference. The function call doesn't know that's a constant. It's just better programming. If you don't do it, the but it works phrase comes forward. That always the students say, but it works. That I hate. I want to shoot myself when I hear that. But it works. It's not important. Is it working in the most efficient and logical way? That's the answer. You have to, you, that's the question you have to ask yourself. Is this the most efficient way? Always your first draft should be making it work. And after it's done, don't say, I'm done, I'm going to submit it. No. And then you have to actually sit, can I make this more efficient? That's your second pass. And then you remove all the garbage you have in your code because all of you left it for me. Thank you very much. When I was marking, I saw all the codes that you didn't like, you just commented it over there. It's as if those people that have something and they don't want to throw it in garbage, I'm going to keep it for future. No, don't do that. If you have a code that you're commenting it because it has no effect, I don't want to see it. Take it off. Okay, next, this time you just got me a warning. Get me a, get a warning from me. Next time I'll reduce mark. If you are giving something to me, it has to be spotless. When I look at it, I should go, wow, this is beautifully organized code. If it's anything less, you lose mark. You will see in tests, exam, I'm very forgiving with marks. I don't care if you write nicely. I don't care if you write properly. Anything you write, you get marks. Things that you have time to do, you can actually sit and do it in your own good time. I put it under microscope. Okay? That should be your best work. That was numero uno. That was the first one. Number two. So this is passing by reference. Remember, always structures and classes should be passed by reference. So pass, if I can type it, pass by reference.cpp. <clears throat> Next one, I'm going to put a, a simple IPC 144 thing over here for you. Oh, I, I made a mistake, but it's okay. There you go. <clears throat> Look at this beautiful program of mine. What does it program do? Very simple and straightforward. What does it do? I'm saying, oh yeah, it just counts how many of those things are less than four. Very simple, right? I'm going through the elements of the array. One by one, I check. If it's less than four, add one to the number that is initialized to zero at line six. And then I print it, right? Please look at it. Understand it, because I'm going to change it to something weird. Pardon me? It says Netflix? Numbers. Numbers. Oh, <laughs> OK. Num I was just watching Netflix, so I thought, how did you know? Number numbers is a new version of numbers. OK. OK, there you go. Thank you very much. Are we good? That means you actually have good eyes. Good. Are we good? So if I run this beautiful program of mine, we'll know that three years later, it's going to actually tell me there are nine numbers less than Less that four. 
less than for. Oh my goodness, I can't type. Okay, I can't even good, do a good copy and paste. Are we good? Any problem? And let's be surprised. Oh my God, it's nine. All right, are we good? Last chance for pressing the cancellation button. I'm going to write something weird now. All right, now take a look at this. See that? I'm going to compile and run it. Voila. What the heck just happened? That is called lazy evaluation. OK. To explain what the heck that is, I have to use my artistic talents and skills and draw some kindergarten thing over here. So this is a battery. Oh, no, that's not a battery. This is a battery. So this is a battery. And we have a wire coming over here to this light bulb. Oh my goodness, I am such an amazing artist. This is a switch. And this is another switch. And it comes to battery, right? So if these two beautiful switches of mine are closed, the light's going to go on, correct? Right? Now, if the first one is off, do I need to check to see if the second one is off? No. The light's going to be off, correct? So it's, there is no need for me to waste my time checking the second one to see if it's off or on if the first one is off. This is an AND statement. An OR statement is like this. I should actually sell this thing as a Picasso. OK, so it goes like this. Uh, and that's the light bulb. And we have the battery. Uh, it changed to a diet, but it's OK. All right. This is an OR statement. In OR statement, if I have the first one closed, do I need to check to see if the second one closed? Yes. No, I don't need to. Because, because if the first one is closed, if the first one is closed, I'm going to have a closed circuit perfectly. It's going to come over here, go up, and go back over here, and woohoo, I have the light on. Correct? Right? That's the same thing. So now that we know this beautiful thing over here, let me just clear this thing. Now, let's take a look at this. C++ compiler does the, what they call it lazy evaluation. I think it's actually smart evaluation. It checks the first thing. If that thing is false, false and anything is false. It won't bother the check to check the second one. Therefore, num plus equal never happens. If the first one is not false and it's true, then to see if the expression is false or not, it executes the second part. Therefore, num will be added by 1. This is called lazy evaluation. And it could be used for something like this. This is much faster type of an if statement. If you see somebody actually writing a code for some graphics to run and things like that, they write code like this because this is faster than if. An if statement is a conditional check and a go-to statement. This is just one CPU instruction for checking an ORT AND statement. It's much faster. Now, it brings us to this point. Whenever you are dealing with a pointer, whenever you are dealing with a pointer, you have two options to see if your pointer is something useful or not. Number one, you have this beautiful pointer that you see over here. Let's call it string. Woohoo! SDR. I need a touch screen monitor. Anyways, SDR. Now, this SDR of mine, it's possible that it's null. What does it mean? It doesn't point to anything. Correct? That's first possibility. Second possibility is for this string of mine. I'm going to take my time. 
Woohoo! For this string of mine, actually point to something, but that something of mine has nothing in it. So, what is the difference between the two? Okay, the first one, there is nothing to check. The second one, there is something, but it's empty. Do we understand this? Now, whenever you have this situation, the best example for this are strings that you work with. So let's say I want to have a function that prints a string. If I, oh, not like that. Let's say I want to, I, I, if I have a function that prints a string. So what do I do? I'm going to say void prnsdr const character pointer sdr. Okay? So I'm going to say if, first I have to check to see if string exists. So I'm going to say if sdr. That's it. Now I could say over here, so if it exists, now I have to say if sdr zero. Zero is not equal null or something, right? To see if it's invalid or not. But why do I do that? I know lazy evaluation. I can come over here and say and. Then I'm going to say zero. So what happens? If you run this program, so in here I'm going to say str is c out, nothing to print. Okay, print. Okay, print. Okay, and in here I'm going to say else c out str. Now, what happens if I do this? That means I am going to first check for this scenario. The problem is that it's possible that str is null. If it's null, I'm going to tell, go to the target and see if the target is empty. There is no target. That's when your program is going to crash. But if you don't do that, if you don't do that, if you actually first check for the pointer, if the pointer is null, because the first condition becomes false, it won't even check the second one. Therefore, you're in the clear. And if that one is not null, now it checks to see if the target is null or not. Now you're on the clear too. Now the kindergarten version of it, like the way I see students write it, is going to be this. If str is not equal, if, sorry, if str is not equal to null, ptr, and, oh, sorry, if it is equal to null ptr, and str len of str is equal to zero. Yuck. Why do I write something like that? Okay, so I'm saying if it is equal, if it is, sorry, if it's not equal to null pointer, okay, and then you, you keep going like that. Why do I write something like this? It's too big of a thing. I, I just got confused writing it. Okay? Try to be as short and sweet as possible. When you understand what is the meaning of false in C language, you don't have to check to see if something is not equal to. No. When it's null, it's false. When it's not null, it's true. You don't need to check it with a null. Okay? And calling to check to the, for the length of the string, understand what a string is. A string is an array of characters which shows the end of data with a null termination. If the null termination is at the beginning, it means nothing's there. Why calling a function for it? Like, see, this statement, number 16, tells I know C language. This one says, I started programming yesterday. Okay? Just keep that in mind. That was it. I'm going to pause.